Good morning. Thank you for being at Willow Hill this morning. Thank you for joining in with us. And we are excited about what God's got in store for us today. Uh, he is always good to us, and uh, we can't thank you enough. Our watchword for the week comes from 1 Corinthians chapter number 1, verse 18. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. That is where our strength, right? That's where our strength comes from. What are we supposed to do? Deny ourselves, take up our cross daily. And I'm very thankful that he gives us the, uh, the uh, ability to, to do so. Um, if you would like to play in the band, if you would be here on Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we would love to have, or they would love to have you. I shouldn't say we, I ain't a part of that group. Um, but uh, choir practice, if you'd like to sing in the choir, stay with us and join us this, this afternoon right after service today. And then handbell practice will be this afternoon at 5 p.m., as well. Uh, next Sunday, Miss Mava will be dedicated, and uh, so we're going to do a baby dedication next uh, Sunday with a meal following the service. I think it's going to be hot dogs with the fixings, and I've done heard there's going to be some uh, good baked beans and stuff like that there. So if you haven't done it already, please don't forget today to sign on the sheet on the piano, please, so that they can get a kind of a head count on how many hot dogs that they need. I know a couple of folks sent me a message this week and said, hey, I forgot to put my name on before we left. Is it okay if, we, if you put it on there? I said, I will put it on there. Guess what? It's not there yet, but it will be before the day's over. I've got them in my phone. I was going to go back and get them all off. Okay, Amy said some of them. My brain remembered some of them, and she wrote some of them down. So, uh, But we'll make sure that you're on there. And... Uh, Make sure that you do that uh, before, before today's service is over, and uh, would appreciate that. Again, the Go Tell Ministries that we've been talking about for the crusade that is coming, uh, there is information in the vestibule. We can make copies of that. Please don't run off with that, because I think that's the last copy I've got. We need to make you some copies if you want to take some home. Most of the information is on the Internet. It, you can look up Go Tell Ministries. And uh, that will be there. Uh, also, coming up in June, on June the 28th through the 30th, there is going to be a Provincial Men's Spiritual Retreat to Laurel Ridge. It's going to be at Higgins Lodge. And if you're interested in that, see Adam. Uh, uh, Chuck Harmon had sent us an email about that uh, earlier this week. And it looks like it would, it's going to be a fun time. So uh, keep that in mind. That is on June 28th through the 30th. Also, um, I hope it's okay because we kind of talked about it last, not last week, the week before. Uh, our choir will be going on June the 30th that evening down to uh, Mountain View Baptist Church in King. They have asked the choir to come back down and sing for them. And uh, so we'll be going down there that night. I think it's going to start at 6 o'clock. And if you'd like to go along with the choir and show support to the choir, uh, we'd love to have you, and uh, you might even hear my stupid brother story or two because that's where my brother pastors a church, so uh, we tend to tell on each other when we're together in a congregation. We tell on each other about our, our silly things that we do sometimes. Um, as you can see, Holy Week readings, boy, that's coming up really quick, and uh, this year I think we're going to uh, switch some stuff around just a little bit. I think we're going to try to do the Love Feast on Sunday night. And then we're going to try to do the traditional Jewish meal on Friday night. A quick, quicker rendition of it, if we can get everything together, that is. Lamb this time of year is getting hard to find. So I'm going to try to find some uh, to, to be able to make and uh, to bring for that. Apple Blossom Festival, Festival, Sunday, April the 21st. Band Prelude at 2.30. Andrew Howe, will, uh, pastor of Grace Moravian, will be bringing the message this year. So keep those things in mind. We are very excited in what God has got in store for today. So if you would, let's stand together and grab your favorites hymnal. And in your favorites hymnal, turn to hymn number 158. We'll sing together, Hallelujah, What a Savior.
and told them this morning, tell your neighbor on the right and left, tell them you love them, glad to worship with them this morning. And you can be seated after that, get a couple of ushers to come, we'll take up our Sunday morning tithes and offering, and be blessed by the choir after that. Father, we are blessed to be in your house to serve such an awesome God. God, it is not always of our finances that you require. May, we help, may you help us to give of our time, of our attention, and of ourselves back into you, as well as be obedient in giving our finances. We're so thankful and so blessed because you love us. In Jesus' name, we humbly pray. Amen.
You can be seated. And while we're switching up and getting ready to do our next hymn, I am going to tell a little story right quick, just real quickly. Uh, we have been blessed to go down to the jam session down here at Willa, Willis Gap over uh, the last few weeks. And I don't know why, but they, uh, they allowed me to sing a time or two. And, uh, but anyway, Mr. Les and Carol have been coming to church here, I guess, for a little over a month. And uh, we was, he was introducing me to somebody the other night, and he said, well, I guess I can call it our church. I said, well, Les, I told you, the first time you come, you're a visitor. If you come back, you're family. And that, that's the way we see things. And that's, uh, I said, yes, it's okay if you said, that's our church. Uh, we'd love, love, love to have y'all. And, uh, you know, they're, they're some good folks, and I do appreciate them. And, um, and we've been blessed to have some folks with us, and uh, with Bill and Pat. And um, it, it's just been good. The Lord is blessing, and, and I'm just thankful for that. And, uh, but I couldn't help but it just struck me as funny when he said it that way. And I said, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's just fine. If somebody's willing to accept me, i got to accept them because there ain't too many people that's willing. <laughs> if you would, this morning, uh, in your favorite hymnal, 317, we're going to sing together the old rugged cross. And you can remain seated if you'd like.
isn't that beautiful? Y'all sound really good. And we're very thankful this morning. This morning, if you would, if you would turn in your Bibles to the book of Daniel. The book of Daniel in chapter number 9. The book of Daniel, chapter number 9. And uh, we're going to start there around verse number 3. And once you get to Daniel chapter 9, if you'll hold your finger there, and if you'll go over to the book of Romans in chapter number 10. Daniel chapter 9 and Romans chapter 10. And we're going to be there for just a little while, and I'll give you some time to look at it or, or to get there. Um, one of the things that I have done said this morning, one of the things that I have been allowed to do this week, last Sunday I confessed some of the things that's going on. And buddy, I'm going to tell you how free that it made me. It made me free because I was able to confess to my brothers and sisters issues and problems. You know, I know everybody thinks that preachers never have any problems and they never go through anything and Satan never tests us and, and Satan never gets on our back and rides us like a rented pack mule, but I promise you he does. And uh, I was amazed last Sunday of how free I felt after confession. And it's not that I have to confess anything to mankind. But it helped me to get it out in the open. So when our preacher group met this week, we had a little more time of confession. And you say, well, preacher, you've talked about some confession before. I absolutely have. I think confession is good for the soul. Confession is good for the soul. Sometimes the selfish pride that swells up in me that wants to show everybody that there's nothing wrong, everything's just hunky-dory and peachy king. I'm riding the gravy train in biscuit wheels. Sometimes we have to get real with ourselves and swallow a little bit of pride. And when you do, God allows things to get better. God has a plan, and God works on a plan. We see in the book of Daniel, chapter number 9, starting in verse number 3, this is Daniel, and he is praying and confessing to the Almighty God. In verse number 3, he said, And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, our fathers and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee but unto us confusion of faces, as at this day, to the men of Judah and, the and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries, whither thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgivenesses, though we have rebelled against him. Let us pray. Father, we are blessed and thankful this morning that you are willing to hear confession. God, I know that you know what goes on in each and every one of our lives. I know that you know our thoughts before it comes out of our mouth. 
but even with the great prophet Daniel, even with the boldness that he had to stand, the boldness that he had to say, go ahead and put me in that lion's den because I'm not going to quit praying to my God. Help us to see that even this man, so powerful, so great a prophet, had to confess along the way. Help us to confess those things in our lives that are weighing heaviest on us so that we may be willing to confess those little things that come along. God, I'm still learning and I'm still growing. So help us to grow together in the fact of God we lean on you with our confession. And through our confession, salvation comes. Sanctification comes. Righteousness is restored. So we thank you for that. Go with us now. Hide us behind the cross. Be glorified and magnified in everything that you do. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. This morning as we get started, I will tell this story, and I think I may have told it before when we were on a mission trip to Casper, Wyoming. Had a wonderful time up there, and the first time that I got to go, or that we got to go, um, I was the camp pastor. Boy, I didn't know what I was getting in for. Our morning started with a 6 a.m. Bible study. Then we would wake up kids, that was the adult and counselor Bible study, at uh, the kids would be, get up at 7 o'clock at 7.30 was breakfast and there was something every minute of every day and then at 7 o'clock that night we would have church in the chapel and I would get to preach to these kids and get to talk to these kids and get to share with these kids but it wasn't just kids there was also counselors most of the time, Amy said, I ain't waiting up on you. There ain't going to be no light on either. Most of the time, it was about 12.30 or 1 o'clock that some of the counselors would be saying, Preacher, let's talk a few minutes. If you know me, you know there's not talking a few minutes. It never happens. So 12.30 or 1 o'clock, we'd get back in the bed to get up at 5 o'clock to get a shower to be at Bible study at 6 o'clock the next morning. And we'd done this for a week, but on the last night, I'll never forget, the, count, the, camp, the head counselor uh, over the camp, Matt, said, listen, I want all my counselors, I want all the adults, I've got the kids. He had some folks to come in to help him watch all the kids that was there. He said, I want y'all to go back to the mess hall, and I don't remember the name of that building. Do you remember the name of that building? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But we went back to the mess hall. He said, there's ice cream sitting out on the table for you. He said, y'all go get you some ice cream. And he said, here's what I want you to do. I want you to sit around the table. I want you to eat some ice cream. I want you to have some time of fellowship. He said, and then I want you to have a time of confession. When he said that, I thought, that must be a Wyoming thing. Never heard that around the house. We get there, we eat our ice cream, we have some time of fellowship, and all of a sudden the guy opens up and he says, well, I'm going to tell y'all. And I think it was, and I may have some of the, the numbers wrong on the times, but I promise you it's as true as I can be. Two weeks ago, Brother Matt seen me, and he said I was high as a kite. I was strung out on some drugs. He had taught me when I was a kid. I went into the military and he said, I'd done some things and I, I, I was, had to do some things. And he said, I struggled. And he said, I got strung out on some drugs. I get back home and get out of the military and I can't stop. He said, but he didn't judge me. This was this man's confession. He said, he didn't judge me. He came up and he threw his arm around me and he 
He started talking to me and then he prayed for me. And he said before he left, he said, listen, you think you could get yourself cleaned up? I need you in two weeks. He said, I need you to come up here to a camp. And I want you to show these boys. It was an RA camp, so it was all boys. He said, I want you to show these boys how to become men. And he said, I told him. <laughs> he said, you see me. No. I don't need to do that. He said, well, you just think about it and let me know. He said, I could use one more counselor. So this man, he says he waits for about a week, and he said, every time I went to do some drugs, something would remind me that I needed to be on top of the mountain with these youngins. He said, I'm telling y'all, in two weeks, I haven't done a thing because God planted a seed from Matt into me he confessed that right before this whole group of men and a couple of women. He confessed that. So another fellow, he starts to confess. The next thing you know, we're standing on a floor that's a, you know, it's just your typical tile, commercial tile floor. And you can start to hear, like it was starting to rain. By the time that we went around that group of about 25 people, the tears fell like rain in that room. We had to mop the floor when we were done. What's the point you're getting at, preacher? I'll never forget that night because there was things said that doesn't bear repeating. There were things confessed that doesn't need to be repeated. But I specifically remember this one guy as he was confessing and he was telling about his drug story. He said, I want you to tell everybody so that when they see me on the street, they make sure I'm clean. He said, I need that help. And he said, I remember him hugging me at the end. He said, if you ever see me again, make sure I'm clean. And yes, I do remember his name. Yes, I do remember his face. I do remember him teaching the kids how to send the flag up the flagpole and how to bring it down and how to stand at attention, how to be respectful of those things where he had a military background. You say, well, what's that got to do with what Daniel is doing? I want you to understand that what that has to do with what Daniel is doing is sometimes we get into a place in our lives that we don't want to confess anything. Whether they be of our own devices or whether they be out of our control. We don't want to confess that we don't have control. I don't want to confess to my wife sometimes that I, I'm not strong enough to do things. I don't want to confess to the church that sometimes there are things in my life that I cannot control. And I get embarrassed, ashamed or this or that. But I wanted you to take the example of Daniel right here. And he said in verse number 3, he said, I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. You know what sackcloth and ashes is meant for, right? Morning. Morning. Put on sackcloth and ashes means you're in a time of mourning. There's been a loss of some sort. Daniel said, I'm setting my face toward the Lord God and I'm going to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting in mourning over the things that has happened in this walk of life. He said, in mourning am I going to do this? In verse number 4, he said, and I prayed unto the Lord God and made confession and said, O Lord, 
the great and dreadful God. And if I can get it to pull up, if it will, and it did, <laughs> I'll tell you here in just a minute. He said, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. He said, I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confessions and said, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful. The NIV right there says, I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, Lord, the great and awesome God. I'm not saying anything about that. You say, well, why does the King James say that it's dreadful? Folks, if we don't confess the things that's in our life that's hindering, We serve an awesome God, but he is true and just. Boy, we're finding that out on our studies through, through Jeremiah. We're finding out that he is just and that he can take his hand off of you and he can let you go through a valley all by yourself. And he will if we choose to turn our back on him. Daniel was praying and confessing so this wouldn't happen. He ain't talking about a dreadful God in the fact that he is just bad. He is talking about him in the fact that he is an awesome God, but he is just to deliver punishment to those who don't believe, who will not confess these things. He says, To this God I prayed unto the Lord my God and made confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that what? Love him. He said he'll keep, you, he'll keep his covenant with those that love him. He'll keep his covenant with those who follow him. He will keep his covenant with those who follow his commandments. And I'm here to tell you that I don't know that I always am doing that. I fall short. Ain't none of us ever fell short at anything else, have we? We all fall short. We all need a time to spend with God. We need a time to pray to God. And he was praying, and I'm going to tell you, he was praying very hard because when he said he set his face on the Lord and uh, the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes, he was in lament. He was hurt. Why? They'd been held in captivity. They were held in captivity, the children of Israel was. Why was they held in captivity? We know they were held in captivity because they had all kinds of idols. They had all other kinds of God. And when God said, turn back to me, they said, no. Well, see, preacher, I ain't in that category. I don't tell God no. I have. I have. When the Lord called me to preach, you know what I said? Uh-uh. When the Lord said... I want you in that pulpit. I said, no way. Lord, you may have never made a mistake before, but you finally done it. You finally done it. I've told him no. I can remember him telling me, go talk to this person. Uh-uh. He's big and he's got tattoos and a ponytail. Not my kind of folk. I'm just being honest. Or there has been a time or two that she's covered in tattoos and her head looked like a pincushion. That's not somebody that's going to relate to me. And I'm not talking about the people. I'm just saying we all have our little stereotypes. But I tell him no. He doesn't want to hear no. You know what he wants to hear? God, you better give me the strength and have a little prayer time with me. Uh, let, let's talk about this as I go because I don't know what I'm going to say to this person because I'm here to tell you they ain't going to like me coming up to them. But not only does he pray, he starts, he makes confessions. Verse 5, he says, we have sinned. 
have committed iniquity, have done wickedly, have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. We have carried ourselves away thinking that if we carry ourselves away, then the judgment can't fall on us. He didn't even stop there. He said, we didn't hearken unto thy, uh, thy servants, the prophets. We didn't listen when they tried to teach us and when they tried to tell us. If you want to grow in the Lord, it's going to start with prayer and confession. If you're going to start into salvation, you cannot come to salvation if you do not confess and believe. Cannot happen. Will not happen. It doesn't matter who's told you what over what years. It cannot happen. Because with the mouth confession is made and with prayer, by prayer, man believeth in his heart. And we'll get to that here in a few minutes. But he says, we didn't hearken to thy servants which spake in thy name. He said, in verse 7, Lord, righteousness belong unto thee, but unto us confusion of faces. Why would he say, Lord, the righteousness belongs to you, but unto us it belongs confusion of faces? Because we can't understand the full realm of what he has in store. We never know that when we get placed in some position when he tells us to go talk to somebody that is uncomfortable for us to talk to we never know what we may have in common with that person or what we may have been through that that person needs to hear the gospel of Jesus and be be told about how that he can deliver you from the things that's going on in your life how we can lift and, and lay a hand just as Matt took his hand and he laid on this young man and it was standing up in Casper Wyoming and told this man he said I know that right now you're in the valley. He said, but I'm going to be praying for you, and I'm going to ask you to come and to do this. He said, and when he confessed, he said, that man planted a seed in me that has kept me clean for two weeks. He said, since I've been out of the military, he'd been out of the military for three years. He said, I ain't been clean more than a day. But he was clean for two weeks because somebody took the initiative to go talk to him. He said, now I'll tell you one thing that I didn't like that he done. He said, I'm going to pray for you that every time that you touch any kind of drug, that you get sick. I'm going to pray for you that if you think about doing drugs, you're going to start feeling sick on your stomach. He said, I'm going to pray for you that God would deliver you he said, but I'm telling you right up front, I'm going to pray for you to be sick. He said, I didn't like that very much. Matter of fact, I was quite mad over it. He said, because that afternoon, he said, I went and he said, I rolled me up a smoke. And he said, I started to light that thing. And he said, the next thing I knew, I was in the bathroom. And he said, that... His words came back to my mind. And I'm not saying that to lift Matt up. I'm not saying that to lift man up. But when we're obedient to what God tells us to do, it is amazing that the things can God, God can do through you with that authority. Daniel was a great man. We all look back at Daniel and we think about the lion's mouths and we think about the things that he done, the things that he prophesied about, we things that he holds dear. And we know that he is a man of God, but we see this man of God and he has a whole little section right here of the scripture that gives great authority to the fact that we need to confess. It ain't always confession that... Christ is Lord. Sometimes it's confession of our inadequacies. Now he did say, we've turned our backs, we've done all these things. And he was talking about as a nation. He was praying for his nation as well as he was his own, his own self. Why would he do that? To be delivered from those things. Over in Romans chapter number 10... And y'all probably know this, you probably don't even have to turn there. 
Verses 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11 says, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, what? Shall be saved. Confession is not always unto salvation. I've been a Christian many years. Confession is a freedom of heart. Confession this week has released me from a prison that I was in. You say, well, what are you talking about? When I wouldn't talk to anybody, not even the Lord. He knew what was going on, but when I wouldn't talk to him, my selfishness said, I've got to show strongness. I've got to go show strength. I've got to show that I can stand on my own two feet. I can show, i got to show, I cannot show weakness. But yet I stand up here and I preach from time to time and I say, we've got to share our burdens with each other. If we don't share our burdens, they get so heavy, you can't take them, you can't do this. I was going right against what I was telling you that the scripture said to do. Fail. I failed. But boy, once confession is made, there's a refreshing, a renewing inside of you. With the mouth, confession is made. But with the heart, we believe. With the heart is where we give it over to God. With the heart, when it weighs so heavy that you can't carry the load, that your knees is buckling under the weight, when, you, when things just seem to get so heavy that you can't keep going on, that you feel like you're, you're trying to trudge through mud, it's up about chest deep. Yeah, I'm here to tell you, turn it over and confess it to the Lord and He will deliver you from it. Yes, we come over and we read out a... Rev, uh, Revelation. Romans. We read out of Romans. With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Why? For the scripture said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be what? Ashamed. Ashamed. We've got people saying things today. Talking about things and lifting things up that they should be ashamed about. We live in a world where people want to bring the darkness out and, and shine a light on it and say it's okay. The scripture says against that. It talks against that. When our burdens get so heavy, share them. You say, well, preacher, here's the second week in a row. I'm going to tell you, I have found enough freedom this week. I have realized the things that we have been te te teaching and talking about over, <laughs> over a, a lifetime. The things that we read in this Bible, if we will actually do them, they hold true. Shocker, isn't it? Sometimes even the preacher's got to be reminded that the Scripture's true. I want you to feel it for yourself. I want you to know it for yourself. I want you to be able to experience it for yourself. Because I'm going to tell you, we went from a very burdening week last week to a week this week that has been absolutely wonderful. And there is only one way I can explain that. God. One word. God. So, you have the opportunity. You have the time. And you have a God that loves you enough that he wants to help you. But we're going to have to confess. Confess. You don't have to confess to somebody else, but you do have to confess to him. I had a fellow tell me not too, so awfully long ago, he said, Preacher, I confess to God, and I confessed once, and that's enough. 
I said, well, I am glad I'm not you. Well, what do you mean by that? I said, if I only confessed one time, I would never have gotten all my sins included in that confession. Because my sins still happen today. They don't have to be a burden to you. They can be a victory for you. As we stand this morning and sing hymn number 108, the altar is open for anybody who needs it. If it's been a while since you've had a time of confession, I pray that you would let God have it all. If you just want to pray over the crusade, pray over the crusade. But let's use the altar for what it was intended for. I ain't got to come to no altar. You're right, you don't. Jesus didn't have to go to the cross, but he did. And he done it for you and for me. The least we can do is walk up and pray at an altar, can't it? We're going to sing hymn number 108. Jesus, source of my salvation. It's free and open for you to come.
May the Lord of love shine his grace and mercy upon us. May he give us strength and encouragement. May we be obedient to him. As we go this week, may his glory abound in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.